Hey, welcome to Code Showdown. In this one, we are going to be deploying a bare bones project on Heroku comparing Flask and Django. This is all about speed into production. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and start the stopwatch and jump into Visual Studio Code and into our Flask project first. We'll go ahead and pip EMV install Flask and G Unicorn. And of course, since we're going on Heroku, we need to set up a few things related to Heroku first. So the first thing is our proc file. Uh, this is going to tell Heroku how to actually run this. So we'll do web and it's going to be G Unicorn and then app.wsgi app. Okay, uh, cool. And then the next part is going to be our runtime. So we'll do runtime.txt. And in this case, I'm doing Python dash three point, oops, three point seven point three. Um, as we see in our proc file, we've got three point seven here. Okay, cool. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and make our new app and we'll go app. And then inside of this app, the first thing I'm gonna do is main.py. Of course, this is the bare bones project right here. So from flask, import flask. And then we declare an app for this file here. Uh, oops, not main, but name. And then app.route to find our home view. And we'll return a string of just hello world. Okay, and then uh, on top of the app, I'm going to go ahead and make another new file, wsgi.py. And this file is going to do from app.main import app. And then we'll just say if name equals to main, then we'll do app.run. Okay, so of course the proc file, we definitely need to declare app just like that. I'll go ahead and do pip emv shell. And let's take a look. We will run Heroku local. This allows me to run my app locally. Uh, it's giving me no module name app WSGI. Oh, that's of course because we have it in here as just WSGI. And we try that again. So it's not in the app project itself. Uh, now it seems to be running. So we can go ahead and open this. And we've got hello world there. Great. So next thing is uh, closing that out, get status. Nothing, so initialize a git repository, uh, git commit or git add, dash dash all, git commit, app start, and then git, uh, or well, actually Heroku create, and this is gonna be flask showdown one, and then git push Heroku master. Okay, uh, let's check our time three minutes so far, not too bad. Um, so I am gonna let this run as far as the installation process is concerned. And of course, we have a absolute bare bones Flask application here. There's not a whole lot going on, but that's not really the point. The point is to get this out there and working. Uh, notice that they're giving you a security update to 3.7.6, so perhaps we just do that in the future, and I might as well just save that here um, just for the purposes of running this again in the future, um, you always wanna use whatever their latest version of the security is. So we're really close, it looks like it's deployed to Heroku, so let's go ahead and open that up. And I should just see a hello world here, and sure enough, there it is. Into production, three minutes and let's say 50 seconds. Not too bad. All right, so let's get started with Django. Let's go ahead and start the stopwatch timer and let's jump into VS Code here. And of course, I want to jump into the Django folder and then we'll do pip env install Django and gunicorn. And while that's running, I'll go ahead and make my proc file for Heroku. And again, it's web and this is going to be gunicorn. And then in my case, it's gonna be dj.wsgi and application. Okay, uh, the next thing I'll go ahead and do is add a runtime.txt. Oops. TXT. 
and this is going to be Python dash 3.7.3, just like we did with Flask. Um, okay, so now that I've got that, it looks like Django installed. I'll do pip env shell, and then let's go ahead and do Django dash admin start project DJ within this app here. There we go. So inside of settings, I need to change debug to being false because we don't run this in production. Allowed hosts, I will allow herokuapp.com and also, wait, it's just dot herokuapps.com. So no star there, okay? So we save that. Next thing I need to do is actually create a view. So Django-admin start app, and it's gonna be Heroku, or actually, let's call it home. So that app will be right here. So inside of views, we'll do define home view, takes in a request, and we'll add args and keyword args as well. And then we're gonna return a HTTP response, and that's gonna be h1, hello world. And then we'll go ahead and do from django.htp import HTTP response. There we go. So now we've got the view set up. We need to bring it into our URLs. So from home.views import the home view. And then we have to make a path, our URL pattern for it. Just an empty path for the actual home view here. There we go. Um, so let's go ahead and test it locally, Heroku local. And looks like it's working okay. I'll open up that URL. Bad request is actually what we wanna see because I changed my settings to be debug of false. Okay, so we can close out Heroku local. We'll do git init, git commit, and the message is gonna be a uh, Django project or whatever, or git add dash dash all, and then git commit, Django project. And then we will do git push, or actually we need to make the Heroku app. So Hero Heroku uh, app, or, or Heroku create Django showdown one. Okay, looks like that's good. And then git push Heroku master. All right, so we did our initial push, and then let's go ahead and take a look at our stopwatch. Ooh, we're getting really, really close. Um, so with this running, I actually already know that there's gonna be an, a problem that's gonna happen is I didn't disable collect static on Heroku, so Heroku is inevitably gonna fail. Now I know Django like the back of my hand, and if it didn't fail, I think we would have been pretty much at the same time, but it's definitely going to fail, and there's, we just lost. So Django just lost to Heroku and adding in the disable collect static in there. Since Django has so many things built into it, sometimes you forget stuff like this. In this case I did. Um, so now it's uh, collect static. I'm gonna go ahead and push it one more time. Um, it did say to update the version of Python just like it did in Flask. So I can do that. Um, granted I'm not pushing that itself, uh, but it is something you wanna get in the habit of doing. And there it is. So Flask already won. Let's go ahead and see exactly how long it is that Django is going to take to get going. Um, and this shouldn't be a huge indicator of which one is better. Absolutely not. I just wanted to show you how quickly we can do this particular thing. So as that's still loading, I also want to say one more thing. If you want to see more of these code showdowns, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll try and do as many showdowns as possible, as long as you guys like them and subscribe. That's it. That's all we need to do. And if these start to get some traction and you guys like them, then we will do a lot more of them to show this sort of breakdown between these lang these programming languages. Because to me, you need to pick what's best for the project at hand. Um, and in this case, if we really wanted speed, four minutes and 48 seconds is just not enough. Actually, let's keep going because I didn't even verify it. So let's open that up. And there we go. So that's working now. Four minutes and 55 seconds for Django. All right, so there you have it. Flask is the winner by a minute. I misspoke at Flask won at three minutes and 50 seconds, and Django came in at four minutes and 55 seconds. And to me, the reason Flask took as long as it did is because I had to type everything. If I copied and pasted, Flask probably would have shaved off a whole minute. Um, and then Django, on the other hand, the reason it took as long as it did is because I had a number of configuration items there. So I thought this was a cool way to compare and contrast the two of these things. Because 
as web frameworks, they both are really, really good. So if you want to see more of these, please like and comment below letting me know what it is that you want to see. So let's say, for instance, you want to compare Django with an API service and Flask with an API service. We can do something like that or templating, how to actually integrate the templating or a myriad of other things, production databases, perhaps, um, and, and maybe even other frameworks. But the idea here is to compare these to see that, hey, sometimes one tool is better than the other for that project. That's why all of these exist and why they're all successful. And in Code Showdown, I want to actually break those things down or at least look at it myself. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys next time.